So when it comes to Gridley and endurance type things, there's a lot of AI mechanics that need to be understood to make it easier, but it's definitely possible without knowing all those complicated things. So I'm gonna split this into two different types of parts. Number one will just be like the raw method that I use without much explanation of the why. And then for the second half, I'll kind of just fight him while explaining, you know, what I'm doing and why it works in relation to what his AI is like. And for the basis here, I'm just going to be using a low ice type setup with 1010. So, no weird like low speed 515 setups or anything, just normal low ice. Um, and it, this is more of a like safety method for endurance type fights as opposed to like a quick method. But you can throw in some quick strategies here and there, and you'll kind of see what I mean by that after you see that the. the you know the fight methodology it's fairly similar to what you would see among like you know top tier people and stuff just some different things that make it easier to not get screwed by him and yeah so let's get right into this okay so start off with the power bombs um I use kind of like a method that will always guarantee that you get two in or like the double hit from the power bombs and I'll explain like how I do that in a second um, but I just like to get to the shooting part okay so what you want to do is whenever you get the chance and Ridley isn't pogoing you want to go up to where he is and break spin which will trigger a pogo and it's also the method that I use to turn him around it's the most consistent way to turn him around so make sure you do that so as usual you just shoot him while he's pogoing and then when he's facing to the right, turn him around by morphing under him and then jumping and spin jumping and breaking spin. So when he does something like that, it takes a lot of judgment there. Sometimes he'll, he won't move far enough to the right for you to be able to do, like to immediately turn him back around. And sometimes he will, so you gotta have, you, know, you gotta keep an eye out for that. And, you know, um, err on the side of just going to the right of him as opposed to going to the going to the left because if he's too far to the left you won't be able to trigger him to turn around if if you go to the right of him and you didn't need to there's no problem there just turn him around again and you're good to go so you'll see me here I wall jump over him and then I jump up and I do this um, the spin jump break and almost every time that will trigger him to pogo um, but sometimes I mess it up like there I just messed up twice now, which I don't normally do that should have worked no I'm doing it a little late. That's it. So for a right side pogo, it's pretty different. And as you saw right there, he just screwed me when he came down. Um, that's why I don't ever do it on the right side ones. Plus he automatically swoops left right away. So if I trigger a pogo immediately, then I'm not going to need to do it on the right side because he'll already pogo from the left side. So he'll never even make it to the right side. But yeah, that's as you can see, that's the main idea behind this whole strategy is to use those spin jump breaks to trigger a pogo. So you just jump up as high as you can. Now, one of the key things is that you need to be pretty close to him um, vertically. So make sure you do a nice big jump when you're getting ready to... See right here I'm late on the wall jump so I'm gonna break spin on the way down. Um, that's crucial if you get a fast swoop where he screws you. Um, you're really gonna need to get good at that and I like to shoot four shots when I get him to the left and then wait and he'll pull back so this is a faster swoop so we'll do that and then we'll break early or we'll wall jump late and then break um, that was a late pogo but as you saw that that triggered a pogo so I shoot a couple shots and then I save my last one in case he does a fast and when he fasts he throws a fireball at the wall so you want to have a pseudo screw to get through that and then you want to wall jump, usually immediately, but sometimes just wait a little bit and wall jump as late as possible, so that on the way down you can trigger a pogo with the spin break. This is like really hard to explain this like while the whole fight's going on. Um, something else that you'll see me do is, if he does something stupid where he gets stuck on that left side, pogoing into the lava, um, 
he'll pogo a couple times and then throw some fireballs. When he does that, you want to... Um, there we go. He's doing it. So you want to just... If you're doing an endurance fight, you want to just keep pseudo screening through the fireballs until he's nice and moves in like this. Um, usually that happens if you just jump to the right and don't break spin. If you're not doing an endurance type fight where you need to like not take any damage, then you can just get hit by the fireballs and it's no big deal. And then he'll just move up and keep pogoing. But yeah, so if you just repeat all these methods, um, you'll definitely be able to do it getting hit a few times, and only very few times, and potentially you won't get hit at all if you do everything right. So like, there I just jumped up to the right and then that triggered him to come forward. Now this is, if you're trying to do something like a damageless Ridley fight or something, this is definitely the way to go because it's not super slow but it's also not super risky. I don't know why he's giving me these late pogos. That's kind of the entire idea behind it. Just, oops, just keep triggering that uh, that pogo as soon as he breaks out a swoop, and then just immediately turn him back around to the left. So, I just reset the accident. Um, so the power bomb thing. I'll explain that now. So you want to lay your first power bomb. You want to be like where he would spawn, and then once his eye fully appears, you want to lay the power bomb. And that'll double hit him. So it hits him once and hits him again. So once the eye fully appears, lay the power bomb. And then wall jump on this little silver block right here. Not the smooth silver one down here. The the silver one that has like the square patterns in it. That I just shot. That one. So wall jump on that one, um I mean there's not really a set time. I do one, two, three and then I auto-morph. And you want to lay your power bomb very centered in the room. And the way that I measure the centeredness is as I'm going downward, this purple block right above the silver block will move with me. That block right there. That one. So I wall jump off the silver block and then I automatically morph. And then once I'm lined up with the purple, I lay it. And then I jump back up to the silver block. I do one wall jump while the power bomb is going off. And then I wall jump and morph again. And then you just keep repeating that. And that should keep him trapped in the center while, while getting double hit. Now, there's two things to worry about here. Number one, whoops. Number one, uh, what can happen is he'll move to the left. And then he won't... Um, he won't get double hit. So you want to make sure to lay the power bomb far to the left, like really centered, like right here. But you also don't want to move too far to the left because he can do some tail swipes. So I like to get around this area as far as X coordinates go. Um, and that seems to be a pretty good area. So I kind of like, kind of line up on this, this pillar in the background or, or one block to the left of it. That tends to be pretty safe. Takes eight minutes. Alright, I guess now I'll explain all the technical aspects of it. So, I'm just going to do this for now so I can explain. So Ridley has an AI quirk, I guess you could say, where if Samus is around his height, um, like her position is around his height position, um, and you break spin, if he isn't currently running any um, like attack, if he isn't cur currently running any code, then when you break spin, he'll it'll just go, it'll just break his whole thing, his break his whole routine, and he'll go right into pogo. And what's nice about that is it it does a few things. Number one, it triggers a whole new pogo phase. So let's say you know he's pogoing towards the right, and I'm standing where I am, and I want to turn him around. I morph under him, I unmorph, I I spin jump, and I break spin. That doesn't turn him around. That triggers a whole new pogo phase. So I'm getting a full pogo to the left which allows me to maximize the number of shots I can get in. Now, another good thing that you can do with this is a different um, strategy that is much safer in a way, uh, but is much slower, is you get him pogoing towards the left, like you normally would where you, you know, on the opposite side of the platform where I am, where you just shoot straight up and he, he can't pogo on you. You get him pogoing there and you do two or three shots or however many you feel comfortable with before 
he breaks out of his cycle. You you don't want him to break out of his cycle. Then you morph to the right under him, trigger him to turn around with the un, uh, with the spin break. That triggers a whole new pogo phase. Turn him back around with another trigger, so he, you get a fresh pogo phase to the left. And if you keep doing that after two or three shots, he'll never do anything other than pogo left and right. And uh, I think Ed has named this strategy "Dancing with Rid with Ridley" because he'll just keep turning back and forth, and uh, there's no swooping or anything. And he uh, Ed says that on PAL you can do it almost endlessly since you're faster than Ridley, and so he seems slower in respect. Uh, but on NTSC it gets pretty difficult once you get into the fastest phase, um, and the fast the halfway phase, like that first fast, is reasonable. It's difficult though. And the three quarters dead phase where he's super fast is just that's just not really doable. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a method that's like super safe, but it takes forever. And like, then you get to the point where you're like, well, is a much longer fight worth, you know, being potentially safer? Because then there's more risk of accidentally screwing up and getting hit, or Ridley doing some weird thing where he only pogos once, then goes up and does a fast swoop or something, and that you're not ready for. Um, so you know. Um, and then, as far as the swooping goes, every single routine, there are things that he has to do after each thing, but it's not part of the same routine. So he'll swoop, and then he always goes for a grab after he swoops. That's not part of the swooping routine. He actually has a break phase in there, and then he goes, all right, I just swooped, now it's time to go for a grab. He kind of, he still decides what attack to do next, and that's what's being exploited here. You do the spin break, um, while... He's in that choosing what to do phase, and it breaks his whole thing, and he goes, oh, got a pogo. Um, so yeah, and as you do it, you tend to get a feel for you know the timings and stuff that go around with it. Like during the video, I was really screwing up my timing for triggering, triggering a pogo. Normally, I'm pretty spot on with that. I don't know why I was messing it up. But you, you really get a feel for the timing of when to break spin and when you're too late and stuff. And you know after you attempt a pogo trigger how long you have to wait before you realize that he's going to do a swoop instead of a pogo and stuff like that. Um, I think that's all of the stuff. Um, yeah, the, the main thing that you're exploiting here is the fact that when you break spin while around Ridley's height, um, it triggers him to do a, a pogo phase, and a pogo phase always starts with two fireballs. Keep that in mind. Um... I can guess I can tell you about some things I look out for while I'm while I'm doing the fight. So number one, I always watch out for those quick swoops. I've got a pretty decent method for dodging them. I shoot about four shots when he's pogoing to the left. So once I've triggered him to turn around, I uh, I shoot about four shots on him while he's pogoing straight up and down, not moving back and forth. And then I start to hold a charge, even if it costs me, you know, one or two shots because I waited too long. Um, it's safer because if he goes for a fast swoop, you can immediately do a spin jump to the left, which pseudo screws you through the flames, and then you wait until the flames go away, and be careful because they, they linger, kind of like Fantoon's flames or the turret shots in Mother Brain's room. Um, and then you can wall jump up and do a late wall jump where you, you know, not barely, but where you're very close to him when you wall jump over him as you wall jump. And then you can break spin on the way down, and that'll trigger him into a pogo. Um, another method that's not as safe is just head to the right, because you can tell when he's doing a fast, he'll either head up really, really, really slowly and shoot a fireball at the wall on the way up, or he'll just, like, like, book it to the top as soon as he, like, he'll just be pogoing and then just, like, he's right at the top. Um, and those both are signals, like, yo, you're getting a fast, watch out. Um, so you can run to the right and hope he doesn't tail whip you. That's not very safe, though, because it's pretty likely that you'll get hit. Um, but if it's, like, a worst-case scenario, like, you're falling in the lava and you already don't have a pseudo screw just like run to the right and hope you don't get screwed like run to where i'm standing um other things to look out for uh well something i try to do is um when i have my charge and i jump over him i try to press l and shoot at the same time after i finish my wall jump like that as you saw me do because normally as you know if you do this it'll shoot the shot but if you do this so if you press L and shoot it on the same frame, um, you'll actually keep the charge, which is nice. I only feel safe during the fight when I'm holding a charge, to be honest. Um, and then something you can also do that I don't do when I'm doing a like damageless type fight where I don't want to take as much damage as possible is I'll do this, and then as I'm wall jumping over, um, 
Or no, that's what I don't do. Um, but what you can do if you're going for a faster, like, low ice or something, you can, as he's swooping, just turn around and shoot. You see the top tier players do it, and just boom, shoot him. Um, but yeah, I, I try not to do that, because there's this thing, like, you just saw there, where when you're wall jumping, if you let go of A, you just stop moving forward. Or, sorry, if you let go of A and forward. And so, when you try and do that, it tends to sometimes screw you up. Like, see how I went really far to the, was really far to the left there? If I had wall jumped slightly early on that wall jump, I would have landed on Ridley, um, if you can picture that, and it wouldn't have been good. And he can also do weird tail swipes, so I like to just spin jump as far to the right as I can to avoid any bad tail swipes or anything like that. But that's only for, like, you know, Kona Challenge or Damage List Ridley fights or something like that. If you're just doing a normal low ice, low speed, anything type fight, Feel free to do that, it's not a big deal. Like, you can survive plenty of hits from Ridley and some lava baths. Um, I feel like I've covered everything, but I feel like I'm missing stuff. I guess I'll just do a fight here and then, like, mention things as they come up. Even though this video is already way too long. But yeah, this power bomb thing, it exploits another AI flaw shit. Where he just. He's weird when it comes to power bombs. I'm surprised I was able to hit double hit with all these. So you just wall jump here, break spin, get a couple shots in. Oh, during the beginning of the fight, he can't um, swoop, so you don't need to worry about fast swoops. Just be ready for it when it comes. You tend to get a feel for it. I know, you know, like. I'm just saying, I'll oh, get a feel for it and you'll be able to do it. But one of the things is, you can count shots if you want, but you tend to just get a feel for when you know he's ready to swoop or not. Like, I'll be doing Ridley fights, and then I'll just be like, oh, he's going to swoop now. And he does. I don't know how I know it. That was bad. So when something like that happens, I thought he was going to move forward more. Uh, whatever. I don't care about doing damage list, but if you were going for something damage list... You know, you would pseudo screw those fireballs. So I feel a swoop coming on. Yeah. Alright, so keep the charge. Didn't keep it. Break spin. Ah, oh, it was too early. When it comes to a right side pogo, you just break spin as soon as possible. The, uh, the routine for swooping ends much earlier on a right side pogo. Oh, something to be cautious about. Like, right there... I got screwed with the... <laughs> what do you know? Um, I got screwed with the pattern that Ridley gave me. Um, with his... Well, I guess this is a perfect time to explain it. So he'll be pogoing, right? And he'll be like... Poof, poof, and he'll do nice big high hops. That's when you want to go under him. But sometimes he'll really screw you. He'll do a high and land like right here. And then he'll give you a low. And if you don't go for the low, he'll hit you no matter what. Because he'll land like right here. He'll just go psh, and go right through you. And if you go, it's like really difficult to make it through. You gotta barely squeeze. You have to be ready for that low. So what I like to do is every time he gives me a pattern, when he's about here, I go for the tail go under it, but I stop early. And then if it's a low, I just go. And if it's a high... Well, no, sorry. If it's a high, I just flat out go. And then if it's a, a low, I kind of hold back and wait. Because lows... Like highs, it's... Psh, he goes straight up and then goes forward and down. Lows, it's he hits the ground, then moves forward, and then goes up. It's kind of like, so, you know, if you just do this, you won't get under it. But if it's a high, you can just do this and go right under. But for a low, you kind of have to wait for him to get to the peak, and then go under. Because, obviously, it's a much lower thing. Um, this is kind of cute. All right, what's? Well, I think I'll end it there. That was a good. That was a good fight. <laughs> um. Oh, one final thing, actually. Shoutouts to Fuzda for this. So I'm just gonna give myself uh, all the beams to make this fight faster. That is not beams. Oh, I have all the beams. Silly me. All right.
I just want to show you one quick thing. So if you're going for a damage this fight, um, this is pretty helpful to do. Holy shit. Um, so let me just get him down to low health and I'll save state. Alright, so, when you're doing a damage this fight, okay, you want to wait for the swoop, okay, and then you want to jump up and shoot as you jump and then get grabbed like that. Hopefully his tail won't screw you, if his tail screws you, you're screwed, but that's how you want to do it. So let's check that out again. So, you wait for him to go up. Oops. Wait for him to go up. Don't get hit by fireballs. Go over him. And that was terrible. <laughs> Alright, so don't get screwed by fireballs. Got screwed by fireballs. I don't think he can tail swipe. Oh no, you know what it is? It's very unlikely that he'll do random tail swipes when he's on the left side there. But if he's on the right side, it's very likely. So you can almost always just... Like here, I'm going to try and do some weird stuff to throw off his AI. Because he's giving me the same pattern every time. It's it's pretty safe. I I've lost two damageless fights. I'm currently trying damageless Ridley right now. Um, I've lost two damageless fights to to getting hit by tail at the very end, and I'm very tired of it. That was mean. So right there, he had picked triggered a pogo, and so when I got grabbed, it was not a good time to get grabbed. Remember, he'll always go for a grab after a swoop, so you can wait for the grab and then do that. Okay, that's a much safer way. All right, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I've been I, I've lost either two or three damage fights to getting hit by the tail on the grab, and it has really pissed me off. So shoutouts, huge shoutouts to Fusto for this. Very good. So yeah, if you're worried about your health, you can do that to finish him off. Anyway, thanks for watching this very long thing. Hope this helped you, and I'll see you guys later.